so this is called the carnival ride problem. And the premise behind this problem is we have a, a ride that's often found at, at, well, carnivals, fairs, and other random places where you might find people willing to pay for excitement. Uh, and the whole idea behind this is this is like a tiny little barrel or room that you stick people in, and this thing spins around. It's going to spin around with some period T. What happens is once it gets going around fast enough, the floor drops out. And the people are there pressed up against the wall, and they sit there just sort of suspended, uh, you know, screaming or, or having a grand old time as they spin around. Um, so, what we're going to go through and do in this problem is we're going to find the required amount of friction between the person and the wall so that the people don't slide down the wall. Now, we're going to do this as a function of the period it takes this carnival ride or this, this spinning barrel room to, to spin around once, as well as the radius. And then, of course, there's always gravity. Gravity's going to come into this somehow, right? So g is going to be, we'll call it a legal variable in this thing, because we know g is going to be trying to pull everything and everybody downward in this problem. So the best way to understand what's going on in this problem is to draw a free body diagram. And in all honesty, that's the hardest part of this whole problem, is the free body diagram. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw the wall right here. Okay, So here we've got a wall. This can be the wall behind this person. And we're going to draw the person smushed up against the wall. So here they are smushed up against the wall. And we're looking at them from the side. We'll give them a little bit of hair. There we go. Okay, we don't need just bald people on this. So here we go. We're going to look at all the forces acting on this person. All right. Now, obviously, there's always the obvious. Gravity is acting downward on this person. Just because this person is spinning in a room, just because the floor has dropped out from underneath it, doesn't mean gravity has gone on a coffee break. Gravity is always acting downward on this person. So it's going to pull downward with some force of mg. Now, I don't know the mass of this person, and frankly, I don't care. You'll see that goes away later on. Now, because we don't want to allow this person to slide up and down the wall, there needs to be some friction. Remember, that's what we're trying to solve for, is what coefficient of friction needs to exist between these people and the wall to keep them from sliding downward. Because if everybody slides downward, they're just in a spinning room vomiting on themselves, and nobody's having any fun being stuck up against a wall. Right? So we need some friction. Now, friction in this case needs to act straight upward. It's always going to act parallel to the plane between two objects, and in this case, that's going to be vertically, because this wall is vertical. When you have a horizontal surface, then yeah, we'll see that friction acts horizontally. Here we've got a vertical wall, and the friction acts upward. Now, we've got gravity downward and friction upward, but there has to be something else acting on this person. Why would the person stay up against the wall? What's holding them up against the wall? And here's where the mistake happens in this problem. Because people ever so badly want to say that there's something pushing the person this way. I'm drawing it in yellow because you can't really see it. And let's be honest, it's the obvious thing. You think something's pushing this person up against the wall, and that's wrong. There's nothing pushing the person up against the wall. That's the weird part of this problem. That's where people get this wrong. The fact of the matter is, the wall is pushing the person inward. There's actually a force on the person by the wall this way. The force by the wall. And you think, okay, well, what's the difference? The wall pushing on the person to the left versus something pushing the person to the right up against the wall. And there's a huge difference here. You're used to thinking of a wall as being stationary or static, but in this case, it's not. It's moving. Now, I know the walls are actually moving in a circle, but remember, because this is moving in a circle, the walls of the room and the people up against the walls are all accelerating centripetally. There is a centripetal acceleration in this problem that is inward. Everything in this free body diagram is accelerating centripetally. 
If you look at this person up against the wall as being what we would call an inertial reference frame, meaning it's not accelerating, then yeah, you start to think something has to be pushing the person up against the wall. But this is what we call a non-inertial reference frame. This wall is accelerating, for this person right here, to the left. And the person is just a great big meat bag in the way. Right? The wall's accelerating and the person's in the way. And so when we look at the forces acting on the person, the wall is pushing the person, causing them to accelerate centripetally. And while I understand that the people never get any closer to the middle of the room, unless they stand up, if they're just pressed up against the wall, they're always going to be at the same radius. But they're still accelerating. This is a centripetal acceleration, no different than the moon going around the Earth. It doesn't get any closer. It's always just going in a circle. Or for the moon, something that's pretty darn close to a circle. So what we're going to do is we're going to start setting up our math here and trying to solve for the coefficient of friction, mu, that has to exist between the people and this wall in order to keep them from sliding downward. So we're going to set up a few equalities and then we'll just do some math on this as we always do. What fun. So let's look at the first part of this. We've got to look at this in either the horizontal or the vertical axis. I think the vertical axis is the easiest thing to start with. Now we know we don't want the person to accelerate vertically in this cylinder. So that means the sum of all forces in the y-axis needs to equal zero. Now vertically we've got friction upward, friction upward, and then there's the weight of the person downward. Okay, pay no attention to the tiny tornado I drew here. I just, yeah, ignore the black blip. All right, friction minus mg. Now this has to equal zero. That is to say these are all equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. So easy enough, we'll say friction equals m. G. Now, let's move on to look at the horizontal axis. Horizontally, the sum of all forces in the x-axis. At first you think, ah, we want the person to stay up against the wall, the sum of all forces must equal zero, but it does not. The person and the wall have to accelerate inward toward the center of this circle. There's a centripetal acceleration here. So the sum of all forces in the x-axis it's going to be the force by the wall, and that is unbalanced. There is not a force acting to the right on this person. That force by the wall is in fact going to cause the mass of the person to accelerate at this rate, AC, or the centripetal acceleration. Now how we tie centripetal acceleration back to the values given to us in this problem, we'll get to in a minute. Looking at both of these axes, we actually have enough information to solve this problem. We just have to be a little bit clever about how we put everything together. And the key in how we put everything together is recognizing how the normal force ties into both of these axes. Let's first look at the y-axis. Remember, friction is defined as mu Fn. And so we can replace our friction term here with mu fn. And we'll see that mu fn is equal to mg. What we also need to realize is in the x-axis, this force by the wall is in fact a normal force. I know you get used to thinking the normal force is always upward or at an angle when things are on a hill. But in this case, the normal force is actually horizontal. It's straight to the left. So it's important to recognize here that the force by the wall is equal to the normal force. And so by looking at things in the x-axis, we can say that the normal force is equal to the mass times centripetal acceleration, which is v squared over r, the radius of this spinning room. So now what we have are one, two equations. 
And you'll notice there's quite a bit going on here. We still don't know much about V, but we'll get there. But we can take these two equations and combine them. We can sub this term in for Fn, and we'll get a little bit closer to solving this problem for mu. So get mu times mv squared over r is equal to mg. And right away we see the masses cancel out. And that's good, because if the masses didn't cancel out, you'd have to weigh everybody before they got on the ride. And so they'd say, okay, all the 100-pound kids can get on now. And then they'd weigh everybody on since they got in to make sure they weren't lying. And then they'd say, all right, now it's time for all the 110-pound kids to get on. And they'd weigh everybody as they got on to make sure they weren't lying. And, well, let's be honest. Some kids are going to be lying about that, okay? So it's a good thing the mass cancels out. So we can let big people on, little people on. Everybody gets to ride together. But we've got a problem here. There's this V floating around in this, this solution. Otherwise, we could just, you know, rearrange for mu and stop right here. But there's this V hanging out. And you'll notice V, the velocity of the people, were not given to us in the problem. The people are moving along with the tangential velocity of V. So we need to relate that tangential velocity back to the period and the radius. And you'll remember, velocity can be given by distance over time, or really displacement over time. And displacement's a dangerous one here because when you think about displacement the way we did back in, say, one-dimensional kinematics, if we let this go around once, the person would have zero displacement. When we talk about this as a tangential displacement, if we let this ride rotate around once, they would have a tangential dis displacement of two pi r. And that would take some time t, the period or the time for one full revolution. So we've got this equation for velocity, which we can substitute in right here. We get mu times two pi r over t squared times one over r equals g. Realize all we're trying to do here is solve for mu. So at this point, all we're doing is going through and just rearranging things. Be careful with these r's. Be careful with the distribution of the squared. But what we come up with is mu is equal to t squared g over 4 pi squared r. What this tells us is how much friction there has to be between a person and the wall in order to keep sliding downward. We'll see in looking at this solution, the period. If the period goes up, that is to say if the ride rotates slower, there needs to be more friction between the person and the wall to keep from sliding down the wall, which isn't a huge surprise. Uh, and it's a similar issue with gravity. As gravity or the acceleration due to gravity goes up, uh, we need more friction for a given period. The one that's a little bit interesting here is the radius. Mu is, in fact, a function of the radius. As the radius goes up, and this is the strange part, as the radius goes up, there's actually less friction required to keep the people stuck up against the wall. So really, in practice, what this tells us is whether or not we can wear a polyester suit to the carnival and ride this ride, which is important stuff we all need to know, right? Anyhow, that is the carnival ride problem. And that's all for now.